Uh, Greg, what's our first headline? Uh, our first headline on this uh, election night was from the world of football that Donald Trump and his administration produced a poli political ad uh, that was deemed racist by basically everyone that saw it that depicted uh, the caravan of migrants. If you're listening to this, I'm sure you know about it right now. And it was less that the, the commercial was controversial, but more the surprise that NBC and other networks, including Fox, chose to air it before later saying they will no longer air it. And now what was racist? I've not seen the ad. What was racist about the ad? Basically that it was using um, Mexican immigrants, but not even. There are caravans on, on the side of Mexico that using them to basically stoke fear that they're going to come to our country and then, you know, comparing th the caravan to this terrible criminal who is talking and about how proud he was to have killed all these people and basically trying to make people think that think the Mexicans are coming and they're going to kill you the, all. That makes the caravan sound awesome. That makes the <laughs> caravan sound like it's like a party coming through your town. You know what I mean? Like it's like the Spuds McKenzie of uh, of caravans that you're just like, oh, these guys are going to kick ass. Like, here's my question, Greg. Do you think do you think if the caravan teamed up with the Alabama Crimson Tide football team, could they beat the Oakland Raiders? <laughs> No, I'm always insulted by the, these questions. Why? Like you, you always hear it a lot on like sports talk radio. It's like, you know, could uh, could Alabama right now, you know, compete with the Buffalo Bills and of that course, offense? Could of they course. stop them? That's ridiculous. But you're forgetting about the caravan, right? <laughs> Add the caravan in. That's they're, a deep team. They're tough, but I think people underrate the difference in toughness that you're going up a level not just from college football. I mean, only the best of the best from Alabama are getting into the NFL, but also the toughness that would have to go up for that caravan playing in front of 80,000 people in the black hole. Think about how many of those people in the caravan have already died caravanning up here. Do you know what I mean? They're not in, they're not, they don't have like RVs. You know what I mean? They're walking and they're getting their cardio in. And I think what could Nick Saban, a genius like Nick Saban do with that caravan? You know what I mean? How could he fi figure them in? into like <laughs> into just kickoffs do you know what i mean like could he just like what skill set from the caravan do you think is going to be particularly applicable to to playing football let's say the caravan's 100 people okay let's say one of them actually killed somebody i think that's pretty valuable in the football field you know what i mean i think he could uh i think he could take out uh he could take out uh, Oakland's quarterback. I think and it's disrespectful to John Gruden and the Raiders and all these players who had to survive getting through the draft process, making the team, getting on the 45-man roster, practicing in the offseason, playing on Sundays. It's like the caravan hasn't put in the work. They haven't put in the time. These guys have been doing it since they're eight years old. That's true. This is the first time anyone's been disrespectful to John Gruden this year. Um, <laughs> what do you think about this? Let's say the caravan comes across. <laughs> And Alabama lines up on one side of the field, Raiders on the other, and they get to pick. You know what I mean? They divide the caravan up equally. <laughs> uh, what's the final score of that game? <laughs> I mean, 64 to 17, Raiders. Okay, let's say, let's say straight up caravan versus the Raiders. <laughs> Just a caravan <laughs> coached by Saban. Caravan coached by Saban versus the <laughs> Oakland Raiders coached by Gruden. What's the final score? 192 to 3. Caravan? Raiders. Raiders. You think the Raiders would win that? I do. I think the caravan wants it more. I think the caravan. I think the caravan's fired up, and and think about this: they've taken the first eight weeks of the season off. Do you know what I mean? They they're, they're not they don't have fresh legs, but they're mentally focused. Yeah, I think the the journey they've been on is going to take a lot mentally. I, w I welcome the caravan, and I think that all of our professional athletes should challenge them at some point uh, to see who's the best uh, professional sports teams or uh, a migrant caravan <laughs> that has somehow been villainized for no reason other than they can't beat a professional football team, okay? They don't even practice. They probably never even seen a football. Soccer, U United States soccer team versus the caravan. <laughs> that's, a closer, that's a closer matchup. I think the caravan, caravan's much bigger and I think they're probably uh, more used to playing soccer than the United States soccer team. I'm going to give it to the caravan. And that was – how cool is the caravan? Uh, I, don't, I know you're excited about this one. Post Malone, one of your favorite artists, made uh, the news this week because he made a pair of Crocs, and uh, he personalized them, 
put some silly stuff on it, and they sold out in about 10 minutes. Yeah, we were all excited about the story. Uh, Crocs are fascinating to me. I've never worn a pair, never put my feet in them. But I like that the company got in trouble, basically, because their Crocs are so indestructible that you only had to ever buy one pair, and that was it. And they were like, oh, now we're screwed. So I enjoy watching them struggle to keep their keep They're their doing well alive. right now, I think. I think Crocs are kind of back. I think they, they've figured out some strategy, but I remember years ago talking about this, reading an article about it. What if you, we're talking my about kids wear, My kids Crocs. wear Crocs. Uh, that's because, I'm not even gonna get into it, why your kids wear Crocs. I wish you did not get into the feet binding thing, but <laughs> you guys decided th- th- to be traditional and bound them with Crocs. And uh, and I you know I think it's child cruelty to be honest, but if we all had our own line of Crocs, Greg, what would your Crocs be? Mine would uh, they would have little symbols. They would have uh, little bags of turkey jerky. They would have some tennis balls. They would have a, a JRVP logo, and then like the front of it would be my nose, just like leading with the honker. Like, like I, a fake like nose I on top, like, like as part of the shoe, or just like no, like no, it would like be kind of drawn. Of like, no, it would be okay. drawn into the shoe. So it'd just be a bunch of different little images: tennis balls, turkey jerky, JRVP, and, and my big nose. Okay, leading the way. Those sound like the ugliest Crocs of all time. Listen, <laughs> my Crocs, black, like a shiny black, like a, oh my god, is like is the nighttime coming for me? Black, little red lightning bolts on the side, punk rock little lightning bolts on the side, and. 10 minutes after you put them on for the first time, they explode, <laughs> sending pieces of your feet everywhere. <laughs> Those would be the Jessel Nut Crocs. I bet they sell out in nine minutes post Malone. I want to send toes to like the four corners of the continent. Th- aren't you worried about the, r- the reviews will come out and people will be a little, a little scared? Do I seem like I worry about reviews? <laughs> no. I only care about one thing, and that's the caravan. <laughs> 